No pressure. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a Drupal team that went into a quest, the quest of having the local environments mimicking as much as possible the server specs. Because yeah, we have, we have all been there when the client comes and says, yeah, I have this issue. And yeah, then you know the developer that says, if my computer works, <laughs> yeah, but it's a server not. So if you meet your local, with the specs of, of the server, you might be able to reproduce it. So, this Drupal team, in this quest, started with Vagrant. Let's just try Vagrant. Let's see how that, that goes. Well, long story short, we had it working, blah, 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 it was so slow, nobody adopted it. So, this Drupal team went on the next step of the journey, which was Docker. Yeah, Docker, that thing that is so famous. Let's try it out. We got this courageous uh, developer that went in and did a, a course online. Got all the, the things done for us, a nice base that we could just try and run it from a story short. No one adopted it. The steep curve was so high that no one adopted it. Then there were some developers, the founders, started uh, doing native. Yeah, but uh, I imagine the specs of the server. Yeah, 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 I can switch uh, PHP version. Yeah, got it. It's fast, nice. But, yeah, you still want to, to have some consensus, right? And the other teams in the, in the company, they were doing this Docker thing. Sounds cool. I don't know. So, another attempt. Why not we find a solution that is a Docker more Drupalized? Maybe that helps us. Maybe that gets us a little better if they already have figured it out. And they are using it. Should be doable and adoptable. Well, we were for two weeks working on a, a nice base that will cover most of our projects. Um, we included it as a kids module. Wait, what? Why? <laughs> yeah, that what was did a, you, what, did you, what did you try to solve? Yeah, that was a, the question that we were uh, asking ourselves. How we are going to make use of this nice base that we have been working for two weeks, that we need to teach the rest of the team how to use it, but now if we have this base that is already working and we just comment some things and uncomment the things that we need, then if we have things that we are improving in the, in the base, we want all the projects to be updated at once, right? Um, we thought, yeah, that would be cool if we do just a composer package, right? But yeah, if you are needing composer, and PHP natively to be able to fetch your composer package for the Docker, to do Docker app, and then run your composer inside Docker. That is a little bit to inception, right? So we, we said, okay, what do we have in our local already? What is the minimum? That doesn't need Docker, but doesn't need PHP. Git, okay. And then there was this wizard purple lady that said, I think I work with something called Git Sum Module, maybe we can use that. Okay, then we did that. It took two weeks to get integrated in all the projects, uh, this uh, base, with the overrides for each project, of course. And this was only for the Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 projects that we had. And of course, you know, I would be learning on the job and, and, and saying, oh, I, I learned now how to do solar. Uh, I'm going to update the base. Now I'm going to roll it out in all the projects, which is going to take me like one week iteration <laughs> in all the projects. Yeah, that, that works nicely. And then it's like, yeah, we are Mac users, most of us, like 90% of the team. Um, and it's slow. But I have heard this keyword, yeah, multigen. 
that, 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 that should get us there, right? Um, so I went there one week later. <laughs> I have more than working finally. And um, yeah. You spend the whole week to get mutagen working. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Well, the problem that I was trying to solve, it was not, not really technical per se, it was hardware. We had very old Macs, very slow, almost no hard drive space. So we were like weekly and sometimes like twice a week trying to remove all the things in the hard drive that we didn't use, dumps of databases uh, and, and things like this to, to be able to actually work or even update the operating system. We couldn't update the operating system because we needed to download that. So that is what I was trying to fix. And why did we have so many problems with the space? Well, we have two big monsters of, of projects with uh, 15 gigabytes of database. When you use Mutagen, which I hope uh, some of you are familiar with it, uh, you are mounting your, your file system inside a container. Therefore, you are sort of doubling it, doubling the size. If you want your database to be persistent, you are going to have the database in files. So imagine 15 gigabytes of database. Mounted is 30 gigabytes. If you have to do something like that. And by the way, you also download every now and then that database is 15 gigabytes. You run out of uh, space. You, you just cannot work. So I was trying to solve a, a hardware, maybe cheapo thing that we did maybe in your hardware. I don't know. That's what I was trying to solve. Uh, but yeah, I, I got mostly working. <laughs> but the big monster of 15 gigabytes didn't run smoothly. <laughs> The big, big grass command, the one that when you switch branches you have to run, you know, like, uh, well, this big grass command, let's just call it like that. I have even an alias for that, big grass command. Uh, that took, say, 70 minutes. 70. With Montaigne. Uh, uh, you don't want to know how, how much it was without Montaigne. So, yeah, um, I lost with one day there for that project. So I focus on fixing the real problem. <laughs> Give me some new maps, please. We need more space, we need more speed. So I got the M1 max. And then I was this day with my new map, I open it and I'm like, oh, I have to do this simple commit. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get my Docker. I'm going to do Docker app. I'm going to check it really quickly. I'm going to do the adjustment. I'm going to um, committed and I can keep going with my day. Well, Docker up, red, 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 red. What? What is going on? I will go a little bit. What? Docker has problems with <laughs> M1 chips? Are you serious me? After all this time that I have spent, I have maybe maybe give me one week, two weeks, maybe two weeks, and I come back and I have it fixed. And, and then another week to roll out another product. Yeah, let me do that. Or, wait a minute. By then, Gabriel started in our company and he was like for two weeks uh, preaching something about the, 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 the what? The death. Ah, the death. The death. The death. The, the, the death. And I was, okay, let me see that. And then he was, okay, maybe you can just read this blog. I uh, scan the blog. And I see this uh, nice comparison that I was a screenshot. Uh, the nice comparison of different operating systems, different hardware, and a speed of uh, how uh, DDEV was performing. Um, and then I saw that it's an M1 chip Mac. If this is in the picture, they have figured out all these errors that I'm getting. So should I sit for maybe one week and try to fix it by myself? <laughs> or let's just try this d that thing. <laughs> um, so I said, Gabor, <laughs> uh, if I have any questions, uh, would you have time to help me out? Anytime. 
So I went there. I was okay. I'm going to try to figure this out by myself. Documentation. Now let's go. Four hours later, I was like, Tower, Tower, I got it. <laughs> I got it working. This is actually literally how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only thing is that you only see from here to here because you know, working from home. <laughs> So the funny thing is I went and I took the monster to test this out. No, I didn't take the, the, the vanilla Drupal installation. No, I just took the, the big monster of the 15 gigabytes. That is actually multi-site and double solar core. But in the four hours I got uh, to the point of having the multi-site also figured it out. Uh, spoiler alert, to have multi-site is just one line in the JAMO file. Um, then I was like, oh, <laughs> now I have to face another problem. I have, I have two cores. How, how, how do I do two cores? Four hours later, <laughs> then I got it figured out. And I was ready to do finally my commit at the end of the day. And I could keep going on with my day. The good thing that that was the base for, for the rest of the project. And we rolled it out. In one week, even Drupal 7 Project 1. Uh, yeah, I still have uh, Drupal 7 Project. Um, we didn't have that in the other Docker. We, we went native with uh, Drupal 7 once, yeah. Um, and uh, for this uh, latest solution, we had the consensus of uh, not using Git Zoom module anymore. Why have a base that you have to actually overwrite for every project because they are not the same? So we just decided to do the configuration of that project specific. Therefore, when we figure out how to do new things like, uh, do you want the Redis on your project? Do you want Vagrant on your project? Then these uh, updates of, of the base of the configuration for Do uh, Docker, VDF in this case, are not a pain anymore. Not at all, actually. As, as you can see, we are <coughs> Really, 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 really all for consistency. So let's make a short piece of all of you. Let's say that you're a Drupal developer, right? On a Thursday morning. And uh, you start your working day and you have to switch branch. Uh, what would be those commands that you would run when you're switching branch? And I, I, I would guess you would start with Rush CR, right? Clear the caches. Run Rush Up DB. Yeah, what are these updates ready? Drush CIM, maybe? Come on. What about the composer install? What about it? How many people of us forget to run a composer install, for example, when you update the core? This little experiment that we just did here, um, trying to show that you need consistency in your team. Now, we already have the localized uh, the, in your environment streamlined. It's consistent. You're using one solution for the problem. And Vida already comes with a handful of great operational scripts, like Vida Describe, that would describe your project, or Vida Launch, that you can use for launch PHP My Admin, if you are using that for whatever reason or launch your mailhawk, for example, or Vida logs, which is like invaluable command to get all your logs in one place. So doing branch switching, we can say that that's a regular repetitive task that we are doing each and every day. It takes time if, if you just want to, you know, do a code review for your colleague who is just updating the port. What would what you do? You just, you just go there, write, check out the branch, run, rush CR, rush updb, rush CIM. Don't forget Composer install. Yeah, maybe don't forget it again, Composer install, right? So, Vida allows you to create commands to your flavor, to whatever flavor. And you need a consensus regarding what commands you are going to run. Uh, a branch update always comes with certain procedures 
compo you only start with composer install or not even. It's up to you. But you have a consensus. You do have a consensus. And it's super simple to put this command into detail. You just create a bash file, you bash script itself. Um, then you put it under .dev commands and under your service uh, because it's named by the service so your command will run on the specific service but there are other things that are rather repetitive when it comes to Drupal I would say like core update maybe nice Thursdays how do you do it? you run Composer outfit, maybe? Um, Garrett, in my humble but certified opinion, um, I actually go to the door of there's a, a, a base there that says the command that you have to run and copy, they say done. Yeah, I don't care, care about it anymore, right? But this is what I'm doing too, I just go to Drupal.org. There is already a consensus how to do things there, right? You have commands that you should run after each other. Wouldn't it be an idea to create a command for it? In that case, you spare one Google search if you haven't bookmarked your page, one extra click, and a lot of scrolling, and a lot of copy paste. Would it be an idea to call it the dev or update? No, update for. Update for. No underscores. Okay. No. Okay. But when you are running a core update, you are pretty much running the same procedure that you run during branch switching. You run certain composer, install, uh, composer commands, then you will run certain drush commands, like right? updating the database, getting the uh, configuration changes out. How many of you at any given time forgot to export the configuration changes of your core? Wow. <laughs> a few of us, I would say. We are just human. Yeah, we are just human. But since you are doing the same thing, right? Wouldn't it be easier to, logically speaking, wouldn't it be easier to have the update, but let's update only the core part, like with an option. Let's say it would be the dev update dash dash core. Yeah. Your expectation of outcome for that script would be have your core fully up to date with the database uh, updates running with the uh, export with, with the, yeah, with the configuration export exported <laughs> sorry, with the configuration exported and have everything ready for you just to go through the git diff and say, okay, commit push. But this is, this is a nice addition. And I would, uh, let's say that you want to update our country module. Yeah, like a security update for the modules. Can we add an extra option for that? Does that module module name? That would work. What would we win with that? The exact same thing that we are winning with the core update. You don't have to. You don't have to think. You just. You can just do the thing that you want to do, and you would have this consensus in the code, version controlled, and be ready to be used all the time whenever you need. For example, when you want to onboard people, that's yet another repetitive task, right? You want to onboard people. Well, for that you have to initialize the project. Usually, the initialization steps are in readme like a couple of kilometers long readme file. A readme file that nobody reads. Yeah, but well, maybe read you, oh, this is the readme. <laughs> that's the most read part of a readme file. But you can, that's consensus, what you have there. And you can put that consensus in a script. You can just run it. Boom, after one week of onboarding people on a certain project, any given project actually, you can do that in a couple of hours, oops, if you're slow. And there are other repetitive tasks. You want to build your project. It has to go through a certain building mechanism. Sometimes something fails, you want to clear out all the things in your repository. Boom, you can 
and big lyric project, the lyric one. The beauty of this, this level of abstraction, is that I'm in your short journey here. For a moment there, let's forget that we are Drupal developers. Let's say that we are Magento developers. Magento also has update procedures that you should run each and every time when you are updating your project or when you are switching between branches. It also has to go through an initialization step, a build step. Sometimes you need to clear everything out. Let's forget the Gen 2 for a moment. Let's see that we are WordPress at the version. Or, or, or let's not say that. <laughs> <laughs> let's see Laravel. Laravel project also, projects also coming with these kind of procedures. Or, ah, let's say WordPress 2. Or Pink Core. Or React. Or Node.js. What you get out from this approach is an extreme level of consistency across all of your projects. And this consistency is enabled by DEDA itself, because you can cover all of your projects with DEDA. And you can follow the same approaches across all of your projects. Together, we call these kind of scripts as the project's greatest common features. The greatest common feature is a, is a phrase in number theory. In a nutshell, that means that uh, you try to find the biggest number that can, oh, English. Uh, what is the opposite of multiply? Divide. divide. Thanks. Uh, the, the greatest number that can divide two other positive integers. This approach can be applied for projects, for processes too. And with that, yeah, you end up with initialization, building, clearing, updating, or whatever else you are doing in your project. The expectation of the outcome is the same. No matter where you would go, you want to check out a React project, and you know nothing about React. But you want to play around. Be that start, be that in it. Off you go. Have fun. You want to try a Florida? I, I do want to try a Florida. I can do the same without getting too much into why do I have to set it up like that. I, I can just start doing it. I mentioned what can you get out from this, but we are also numbers people. So here's a little comparison. Um, in our team, we develop um, something that we call the Kick Starter. Uh, we are very creative people, and uh, we just name the Kick Starter as an installation profile that Kick Starts project. Very creative and very descriptive. Um, logical too. Logical. logical too. Well, this installation profile that we have to get you started with a, a nice um, setup of, of tasks that you do in all the projects. Um, to get to an initial commit of that one, when you are starting a project, before that, it took us maybe like half day. Now, uh, I put a little more time once I, I, I finish all the rollout of the project, and I include it in the master script that we have for the, the, the Kickstarter installation, a one command line for DDEV, then you are uh, getting the, the clone of, of, the, of the installation profile in your local. It's getting the theme as well. It's getting everything started for you. Then it's launching DDEV for you. It's launching the, the site already with the, the correct uh, URL in your browser. You follow the steps of uh, installation. Next, next, next. Done. You export the configuration to your correct place. And then it actually pushes and commits everything to the repository that you, uh, in the questions that it is asked from you. Uh, and then five minutes later, you already have the project started with a nice release. So that is quite a difference. Also, security updates. Maybe tomorrow we have one. 
I don't know. Um, to get the security update for core, for example, which is in all the projects, to get that race to test and, and be able to test, maybe before it took us like two hours per project. And now, because we have more automated uh, processes and, and DDEV is, is a part of it, maybe half an hour even with overview. Oops. And no more than that for sure. The, the other one about the other monster that we have. All right. Uh, yeah, we we have two monsters. One which comes with a 15 bits database, compressed, small hub, and the other one is a. Um, so how do you call how do you call that that, that monster that has a lot of heads? A hydra. Uh, that's more of a hydra because it uh, comes with um, a React front end. It comes with a. Uh, a gateway that is written in TypeScript. It comes with uh, a middleware where there are some uh, TypeScript, Apple GraphQL integrations happening, and there is a backend layer where we have Drupal 7, awesome. We have Drupal 9, and we also have Magento. It's a lot, and um, yeah, putting it together to. I would say maybe a couple of days to have a working environment. I, I couldn't make it work with the Graph solution. It just didn't work. We did that. I just created the instances for each and every head. Even for React. But the is well, mainly created for PHP. They also use it for React. Uh, fun fact, uh, right now it's in the uh, roadmap of EDAP to create a specific solution for Node.js, React, Angular, so to put more effort into the front end. But yeah, it, went, it took only that much amount of time. And when I tried to onboard somebody, uh, uh, when I was onboarded, yeah, that, that week was a long, long week. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Um, and then when I tried to onboard another uh, developer, um, it took really no more than two hours. Why? Because we have a consistent, uh, we have consistent operational scripts and consistent consistent environments. Only take two hours to onboard somebody there. Nice swing. Yeah, and, and what you mentioned before, like uh, switching branches uh, per person, um, it. it if you start talking numbers, but if you talk as well, like how many developers do you have in the team? If you are comparing like three minutes against 30 seconds, uh, for each of the developers that you might have, at least maybe 10, you are already talking about a big impact on how many minutes you are saving, and maybe you are saving hours at the end of the day. Yeah, because maybe you forgot to run Rush CIM, or forgot to run Composer uh, install, when you are doing brand switching. And this is, this is switching branches per, per person, per iteration. So that three minutes is there all the time when you try to switch between branches. And if you have a busy day, you do that like, I don't know, five, six, ten times a day. Multiply it with your team, for example, ten people. That's a nice jump of uh, time that can be used more productively, I would say. Or, or even to, to just clone any a project, uh, except for the time that you have to dump the database, depending on how big the database is. But let's assume that you already have the database. To so just clone it in an in, init in project, <laughs> either in it. In it. In it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you just gain um, a lot of time. A lot of valuable time, where you don't have to scratch your head why it doesn't work, or what did we overlook, or did our colleague overlook something. You have, you, have, you have a very consistent way of working by implementing this. Oh, what lessons did you learn? Um, well, we learn by doing right. Um, I would say that maybe I didn't learn it, but I, I, it just reminded me. 
Keep yourself humble. Why? Because um, yeah, God just started and, 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 and he came with a new idea. If I would have been like, I am here for eight years and uh, this is the way we do things and uh, we are going to spend one week more and then I will come back with solution. If I do that, instead of trying to, to, to see, okay, it comes with a new idea. Uh, maybe it's, it's good. Why not? Let's try it. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. It works. Perfect. So if you keep yourself humble, then you, yeah, I think it's a path to, to improvement. Because you're open to, to new ideas. And I think that we learned that first day is not anymore the, the most clear day of the day in our team. Because we have now DDEF at the core. Um, when implementation is easy, then you get more people to adopt it. And that's the ratio that we saw of uh, adopting the, the dissolution against the others. And we have an awesome team because uh, the integration of DDEF, instead of being a one woman's job before, it was the whole team chipping in. And we divided the projects and in one week, but due, because we needed to do more things, we got it done. And painless. So, we promised some demo, but tiny bit of theory first. <laughs> So this is what um, one line of code looks like to, to just fire up um, the DDEF uh, in your project. So you just navigate to your project folder, and then you can just do a very long command, uh, config, you give the project type, which is Drupal 9, uh, the doc root that is going to be your project, because yeah, every company, I think, we have a different doc root. Um, then the PHP version, of course, the database version, and if you are a Mac user, you can just say, okay, fire me up with a mutagen enabled already. But if you don't want to Google for the long command, or if you don't remember everything, you can just do PDF config, and it's going to start asking you questions. And it's, it's going to assume that the name of the folder that you are in is the name of the project, and it's going to help you out. And then, after that, you're going to get the config file, that is the, what, it, what it, uh, actually makes it work, with all the questions answered in the YAML uh, state. And in this case, we have uh, mutagen enabled false. And you can just do that if you forgot to put it in the first place. Because I think if you do DDEF config, it doesn't ask you if you want mutagen on. Was, was, it, was, it, was it all that you had to do? Um, in comparison to the week that I needed to um, spend to exclude the folder of the database, to not be mounted in, 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 um, in the mutagen uh, container, this was almost everything that I needed to do. Just true, and it would do everything for me, because it's going to generate me this mutagen YAML file, and sorry, I will ask you to read first this file, because the first line, you have to remove it if you want to do changes. If you don't remove it, it's going to get over every time. So, you might say, okay, yeah, I had uh, this folder and this folder and this folder, don't mount them for me, please. But if you don't remove the first line, you're going to get them mounted later. So if you want to make changes and override it, then you just remove that and do your changes, and then it's going to persist. But this was all in, in comparison. For the solar double core, for example, that took me a little bit more because the, the entry point part it was not the same as the template that you get when you when you get the DDEF. But I figured out with, with the documentation, no problem. And once I got it done, uh, it, it was as simple as I needed to mount the different configuration. If you see in volumes, the, um, there is a solar demo and solar umami in this uh, demo. Uh, those are the different configuration uh, folders that you have with all the YAML files that you need for each of the 
instances. And with the entry point, you are not only creating the, the core uh, for, it, for that, but you are also telling mount this configuration folder for the configuration of that core. So at the end, it was not that bad. And uh, piece of advice in the meantime, do you read uh, the, commands, uh, the comments in the uh, generated VDAP files or actually any VDAP files that, uh, that might come in front of you? Uh, the VDAP team put a lot of effort to make the documentation simple, short, descriptive, and very helpful. Usually, how would you update core? You would go to the code board, you would search how do I update core. What's your in, in, in VDAP, I really don't have to go to Google. I can just use the VDAP font and read it through. Yeah. The same for Redis. Uh, Redis, uh, well, uh, normally you could take this demo and, and, and fire it up and it would work. But if you don't have it, you just have this uh, command ddev get uh, root ddev redis and then it's going to get for you everything that is needed included a, a script that is going to uh, inject the necessary uh, lines of co code in your settings.php to include the redis configuration so easier uh, than that Ring of saw this is only available for drupal right now but uh, contribution is always not coming. <laughs> and if you are not a Mac person, yes. we've got you. Because it's very easy to just override the, the main configuration with config.local.yaml. This uh, file is uh, excluded in the uh, git ignore. Therefore, you are not going to ever commit it or, or uh, push it, and all of a sudden, all your math colleagues are going to be blaming you. Um, but, uh, in, for example, our consensus is that we are 90% math people. Uh, so the default is going to be mutagen true. But, for people like Gabor, they can still just work with this and no problem at all. And he will never commit anything that is going to make us angry and, and that is going to... <laughs> you can always switch to names anytime. Everybody. Been there, done that, never again. <laughs> but now, a little bit of demo. So, today's Wednesday. Let's see that tomorrow we get the email of uh, updating or in all the projects. Um, I already started um, the DDEV of my demo for today, which is available, by the way, in Ida, so you can download it and play with it. Um, but it takes a little while. Uh, the only downside, the only downside <laughs> of having a Mac is that Multigen is going to take a little while to fire up, so I didn't want to have you guys waiting. <laughs> so I already fired it up for you. And, um, then you can see that on purpose I have my umami and my vanilla Drupal outdated and this is a multi-site demo so I have umami ddev site and I have demo ddev site and these are just so you see is uh, running and it's outdated so imagine tomorrow I need to do this uh, core update for a multi-site, this is what I'm going to do. So this is the, the bus script that we have. Um, goes through all the multi-sites that you have. It's going to run all the commands that you would do normally. It's updating core. Is exporting the configuration for both. And also, like we said before, um, the uh, updates of the database and whatever is needed. So now we just refresh and we update it. You just have a couple of comments less. 
that you originally run for this device? How much time did, uh, does, uh, did this take? Being from time or TV? Well, not as long as I know silent, right? <laughs> <laughs> Second, um, when you get this to, to destroy even the database, you can just do ddev import um, this command, and you import the database fresh. So even if you have to destroy the database in in no moment, you have it back up. But yeah, those kind of downsides are corrupt things. Random, but yeah. yeah. In addition to that, but I wouldn't necessarily call it, uh, I don't know, issue, but it's one of how DW is working. Uh, DW comes with uh, their own tailored uh, Docker, uh, Docker solution. So, for example, if you are working for a larger organization and you would like to use your own, then you have to dig much, much deeper to have this kind of abstraction available to you. Any other question? Yeah, I was wondering, for the imported now, the database that was pretty small, of course you mentioned you have a size 50 gigabits, I also have a similar one, yeah. and that, yeah, importing that one takes half an hour, yes. 45 minutes. Yes. Is it a defined solution to that, or is it just waiting for that one? I, I go fetch coffee. <laughs> 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 no, I, I really, I haven't found yet uh, a better way, but uh, indeed those are the kind of uh, things that uh, Gabor and I were very passionate on, on getting uh, annoying tasks automated. So those are the kind of things that, that we always you know, are in the back of our minds, like how can we do this better? Like for example, in the init, right now, um, as, as I mentioned before, I don't know if you got it, I said we are going to assume that we have the database downloaded. Well, one of the things that we have in the back of our minds is like we want to fetch the database in the init already. We don't want to go the server with them or whatever and then take it to your local maybe with SSH, I don't know. Yeah, don't forget synchronization. Yeah. Yeah. So those kind of things uh, is what we are trying to do. So uh, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Am I still required to install things like Drush, PHP version, MySQL, MariaDB? Like that, or natively, you mean, or what do you mean? Yeah, natively. Uh, in the ideal world, you, you, you shouldn't. 
and actually not at all um, lead the solution to encapsulate your project. So uh, let's imagine that a, a new colleague will start. That new colleague will only need three things on his or her machine. That's Git, that's Docker, and GitHub. That's it. Yeah, and even um, for Motogen, uh, you just only need to install DDEV uh, in your machine. When you actually start a project and you don't have Motogen installed because you need at least in Mac to have it installed, it actually installs for you. <laughs> it's like, okay, I, I see that you said uh, Motogen true, let me fetch it for you, <laughs> and then I will keep going. Did you maybe also when you made the decision to go with DDEV, did you also consider Lambda? And did you then consider which to take? Yes. Um, well, originally when I uh, created the uh, scripts for the project's great small users, um, I just worked with Lando. A good colleague of mine showed me Lando, and it is a great tool. However, uh, Lando did not come with an out-of-the-box mutagen solution. And uh, at the time when we, uh, we implemented the solution, um, the consensus was that probably there won't be a mutagen solution out-of-the-box for a while. And uh, since 99% of the team is using black, and we uh, for our mutagen mass. was a must. <laughs> and even if you don't like using mutagen, um, the data already has an out-of-the-box solution for NFS. And you can enable it just as easy as you enable mutagen. And while it's not taking the pain away completely, but it makes it bearable. That's something, that's something. Um, is it possible to share your content script? Indeed it is. <laughs> you can scan the QR and then you are going to get to the repository with the demo that I showed you guys. And you are going to find in the .ddf folder, inside commands, inside web, our uh, commands. The init that I actually finished yesterday, <laughs> the update and the clear, those are our consensus for the team. Um, and you are going to find the presentation in PDF under the.ddev underscore resources. And you are going to, underscore resources, you are going to find as well the database that I have with a snapshot of, of, uh, of the demo. So you can just try it out. And uh, I did a readme file. But you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you could, I don't know. Uh, our um, um, social medias are also in the readme file, so if you then get uh, from it and you want to hook uh, with us, then you just can read the readme file as well. And um, yeah, if uh, you want to approach us, uh, after lunch, maybe, and maybe you buy me a coffee. <laughs> if you have more questions, uh, coffee is free, by the way. <laughs> we can just uh, have a chat, and if you have more questions, we can answer them. Or let me think about it and come back to you later, I don't know. <laughs> right. And uh, with that, we would like to thank you for your time.